I'll bet you that will work. <laughs> they put a newfangled button on it, on and off. <laughs> it's easy for you guys to sit there and laugh. You don't have to flick the switch. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to the Federated Church of Fistdale and Sturbridge. And welcome for you folks that are at home this morning. So everyone is aware, there's nothing wrong with the organ. The organ's fine. We just decided not to play it this morning, to add a little bit of flavor, something a little bit different for us to hear. How's everybody this morning? Did you all have a good time last night? I would like to personally thank Chris and Nancy for spearheading this. I understand that there was a lot of people that were involved, but without the generation, without generating, without spearheading this, 
it never would have got started. So thank you very much for your willingness, your love for your community, and it was a phenomenal event. 20 people signed up and 52 showed. Now you might think that would be a problem. It wasn't, we had more than enough food and more than enough laughs and the company was phenomenal. So thank you very much everyone for showing up last night. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we come before you this morning. A little tired, but okay. We thank you for last night. We thank you for this community and your gifts that you give to us so willingly and lovingly. And now, Lord, as we place ourselves before you on this glorious day, we ask that you lock the world out for just a few minutes, that our cares just fall off our shoulders for just a little while, and let us hear your voice in our hearts and our minds and in everything we do this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Morning. Um, we have at least two announcements, maybe three. Ken can come up and, and get in line. <laughs> um, the Super Bowl party will be at the home of Lucette and Dale Favreau, and that is at 58 Shattuck Road. And they are asking people to come anytime after five. All are welcome. And I apologize, I did not bring the book up with me, so there might be a detail. I think that we are, people are bringing. It's potluck. Yeah, it's potluck. Um, oh, yes, and please bring a chair if you would like to sit on a chair. They do have floor space, but um, if you'd like a chair, bring one. I mean, if you'd like to sit on a chair, bring one. Um, and then I'm going to ask Ken, Loretta, uh, Ken, who goes first? Okay, Ken is closer, so Ken has an announcement. Greetings everyone on Super Bowl Sunday. And I'm here to report on our church's rental to the Sturbridge Senior Center. And I was thinking being Super Bowl Sunday, I'd like to uh, use an analogy of our rental arrangements. There are two, there are two teams, the Senior Center and the Sturbridge Federated with excellent management and team players. <coughs> The Senior Center's home field is 4, 4, 480 Main Street, and, and the Federated Church is 8 Maple Street. And the game event will be planned at 8 Maple Street. Maybe we can call it Super Lifetime Event. The event began on January 4th and is moving down the field towards the goal line. Both teams huddled, made plans, and handed the ball off to the other team. The event has gone well. When both teams cross the goal line, there won't be any losers. It's a win-win for both organizations. It's an, it's an exciting new opportunity to benefit our church and help our COA Senior Center. Here are the specific details. <coughs> Excuse me. On January 4th, we received an inquiry from Leslie Wong, director of COA, about renting the space. In her letter, she said, we're seeking space for the Council on Aging programming during the renovation of the Sturbridge Senior Center. We'd like to occupy such space for up to 15 months, looking to occupy late 2023. <clears throat> we had several meetings here to discuss the rental, circulate information about it. We had a, a church-wide uh, uh, meeting and voted to proceed with the rental. Bob, and, Bob Knight and I were appointed to be negotiators with Leslie Wong. We had several excellent discussions and presented a proposal to Leslie in a February 2nd meeting. <clears throat> in that proposal, it was agreed upon the rental arrangement for space at 8 Maple Street for an estimated 15 month construction period, estimated to occupy by July 1, 23 or earlier. First monthly rental payment will be due on the occupancy date 
rental can be extended as needed due to construction delays. Leslie agreed with the proposal after a few changes. She met with the town administrator on February 6th. The town administrator met with the Board of Selectmen and the proposal was approved. <coughs> Excuse me. The town attorneys will prepare a rental agreement for our executive committee to review and Hollis Turnbow will sign it as president of the executive committee. <coughs> Bob and I were negotiators. We'll continue with the rental and heading an, an ad hoc committee to assist in getting the senior center moved in. It'll be a great opportunity service for our church to step up in this time of need and assist uh, Leslie and her staff at the Senior Center to have a facility to provide all of the important services to our seniors and the Sturbridge community. The church is a perfect building and a great accessible location for our seniors and others to drive to. So thank you very much. And we hear more information, we'll get back to you. Good morning. Um, I want you to remind you that we are going to bring the Lent, uh, begin the Lent se series on um, the first Wednesday of March. Please join us at 5:30 for soup, if you'd like, in Fellowship Hall. That'll be followed by a book study, which is the Lord's Prayer, which will be spearheaded by our pastor um, at 6:30. So please join us then. You uh, can sign out the book, The Lord's Prayer, down in Fellowship Hall. It does, there's no cost involved. You just would like, please attend the meetings. Uh, it'll be every Wednesday for six weeks, starting the first Wednesday in March. Thank you. Could we please limit, to, limit it to uh, one book per household, please? Thank you. I'm seeing um, another announcement. Glenna would like to come up. No. You can do it here, but I have to repeat it so people at home can hear. Okay. You have another announcement. Ken will come up after. <laughs> oh, you will come up. Beautiful. Thank you. I know, but thank you. Hi, um, we haven't done very many crafts in a long time, and some of us are just itching to do it. And to change things around a little bit, we're actually gonna do a craft this week for ourselves. We're not gonna sell it. We're not gonna give it to the poor. We are just going to bless ourselves or some friend. Um, I have a bunch of little boxes <clears throat> that you are going to decorate and take home. You can either keep it for yourself or you can give it as a gift to somebody else. Okay. That's time of day? Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Thank you. All right. Almost forgot one additional announcement. The uh, Irish Feast Benefit Dinner on March 16th at uh, 4.30 and 6.30 at the Public House, the annual Corned beef uh, buffet dinner, maximum of 500, 250 for each seating. Tickets are now on sale with Catherine, uh, 8 to 12, or anybody at home. You can do it online, Facebook, or the website. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other announcements? And maybe you would join me. Um, stand and join me in the call to worship, please. Thank you. God sets before us blessings and curses. God sets before us abundance and scarcity. God has told us what God desires of us, blessing and abundance. God has told us what God asks us to be to the world, blessing and abundance. We come to choose to live with wisdom and compassion. We come to be a blessing of love, abundance and mercy. Will you remain standing and join me in the opening hymn, Here I Am, Lord, number 452.
please be seated. Join me in the unison prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Holy One, dare us to respond to you beyond the limits of our love. Please help us to lay aside our quick anger for lasting curiosity and abiding humor. Help us to forget all the ways we can separate ourselves from you and one another. Dare us to reveal the whole of your image in us instead of a few convenient parts. Dare us to risk all we are to become all that you wish us to become. Lord, dare us to mean what we pray. Amen. And the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. And let the children come forward. Oh, you're up here, brother. Get up here. Oh, no, 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 no. The children don't sit there. We sit here. Right? Yeah. yeah. See what God sends us? He sends us children of all ages. Isn't that wonderful? Because I know Steve. Steve has the curiosity of a child and the generosity of a child. Isn't that a wonderful thing for an adult to have? It really is. Today, I'm going to be talking about to the adults about our feelings and what we think. Because sometimes what we think and our feelings kind of get in the way, don't they? Sometimes we get angry at people, don't we? What do you think, Steve? You get angry sometimes? Once in a while. Once in a while. I don't see him angry very often. Normally he's walking around giggling and telling jokes. (laughs) But we all get angry sometimes, don't we? And what do we do with that anger? Because you see, when we're angry, God has a hard time communicating with us. And not because because of any difficulty that God himself has, but it's a difficulty we have. God doesn't understand anger. He doesn't want us to be angry with one another or with anything. What he wants us to do is to find forgiveness in our heart for people. And sometimes that's a hard thing to do. So we have to be able to talk to God and ask him to help us to find forgiveness. Can we do that? Can we do that together, Steve? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You know I got to pick on him, right? Yeah. Shall we pray this morning? Lord, we come before you today seeking your help for us to learn how to forgive. Help us to learn to love the way that you love us, to cherish the moments that you give us each and every day, and to cherish the people that you put around us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You want to go downstairs and goof off? Awesome! You going downstairs and goof off? (laughs) You might as well do the reading then.
Our message today is from 1 Corinthians 6, I mean 3, 1 through 9. And so, brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord assigned to each, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but only God who gives the, the growth. The one who plants and the one who, yeah. And the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants working together. You are, God, you are God's field, God's building. Amen. This morning's gospel reading will be from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 21 through 26, and 33 through 34. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder. And whoever's murder, whoever murders, shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult the brother and sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell, to the hell of fire. So when you are offering a gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him. Or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you'll be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid every last penny. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is his footstool or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. So ends our reading this morning. May these words enlighten our hearts and minds so as we go into the world we demonstrate to the people of God that God is present here with you and amongst you. May it be so. Amen. Please join me in prayer as you are able. Loving God, we have gathered we have gathered at this time of remembrance 
and we ask that you block all else from our minds. May the presence of the Holy Spirit open our hearts and minds so that we may become more in the standing of all of creation. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the reflections of our hearts reflect your love and peace for all of your children. And may our hearts and minds unite in love for you and your ways. Amen. As I was studying, reading, reflecting upon this morning's scripture readings, I kept coming back to what keeps us locked into the flesh? What keeps us away from God and God's ways? I believe it has to do a great deal to do with our anger and our frustrations that we feel with life. These are types of emotions that keep us away from God as we cannot hear God in this state. For these are not the feelings that a loving God will understand. Anger keeps us away from God in a strong spiritual life and keeps us tied to the world in its ways. If you truly think about what this world has to offer you or any of us, as we run from one place to another and feel that our brothers and sisters that we come in contact with in the greater community are keeping us from our missions and our goals. Boy, do we look at things wrong sometimes. Our readings this morning take us down a pathway where we should be aware that God works through and with people to accomplish what is best for us and to answer our prayers. Our minds have many different parts, as we're aware of. But as science has shown us, there's basically two different parts of our brains. And these parts come from the ancient times. The first one is a flight, fight or flight instinct. Things we've heard about. The second is the logical sections of our mind. Now, what both of these parts of our minds are very important. Because you see, the fight or flight instinct that God installed, instilled in us is for our protection. It's to keep us out of danger and to be aware of our surroundings. But when these senses in this fight or flight instinct is overused, as they are so much today, these primordial instincts become our primary way of dealing with one another not the way God wants us to deal with one another. Our minds also have a logical section, one that most people use as we go throughout our day, or at least we try to. And this part is also important, for as we approach our daily tasks, if we don't use the logical part of our mind, well, things fall into chaos. But if it's used strictly by itself, then we become alone. The world becomes cold and distant, and we wonder where everyone is. See, I don't believe that God wants you to use either one of these parts by themselves. Neither alone will bring anyone happiness, peace, or spiritual awareness, or awakening. Jesus said, I said to you, if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. 
Anger keeps us from God. Yes, God is going to be still there with you, sitting right beside you, waiting patiently for you. But it's you that has to turn. It's you that has to turn from the anger to connect to God. Now you can, might be saying, sitting there saying to yourself, you know, Pastor, that's easier said than done. And you're right, it is. It's pretty easy for me to stand up here and say, you have to turn away from your anger. Yep. Nobody ever said it was easy. Nobody ever said God's ways were easy. Just worth it. See, the world's ways are easy. The world's ways will keep you trapped. The world's ways will keep you in wanting more for yourself rather than for your brother or sister. The world's ways will teach you how to accumulate great wealth. But God's ways teach you to share that wealth. You see, what we need to engage is our heart with our brains. For there is where the Spirit of God awaits the Holy Spirit is brought into the equation when you use your heart. And a better life awaits you. Using a heart opens a person to God, which also uses empathy, forgiveness, and grace. Gifts from God. Leave your gift before the altar, Jesus said, and go. First to reconcile to your brother or sister, and then come and or offer your gift. When our hearts and minds are open and engaged, we become more than flesh and blood. We become a conduit, a conduit for which God can communicate in action to the world. The world needs to see God in action today, more than ever before. And it is you, the folks that are gathered in God's houses around the world, that have the responsibility and the duty to show people God's presence, God's light as we go forward. None of this is easy. Nope, not one little bit of it is easy. But it's all worth it. Aren't we tired of seeing our world torn apart? Aren't we tired of seeing our world angry? Aren't we tired of seeing our world tied in such high levels, that, uh, levels of anxiety that our world seems to be frozen? It's time for a better way. And this better way is being taught to us through scripture, through sermon, through preaching, through song. And then it's our duties as disciples to carry those messages into the world to teach the world just a little bit better way. We're not going to change the world tomorrow morning. We have to understand that. The only one that has the power to change the world tomorrow morning is God himself. And through Jesus Christ, we find forgiveness for ourselves. We find forgiveness for the world. But we have to be a conduit. We have to be a conduit for God's children to see and to love being around. Paul tells us that we have to do this by baby steps. There's no quick way of learning patience, peace, and loving one another regardless of a person's actions. We hear that God hates the sin but loves the sinner. 
we have to learn that as well. And that takes time. It takes little baby steps. One step at a time. And you begin to transform your life, which helps you to become more than flesh and blood. It allows you to work with your spirit and the spirit of God that can change the world, or at least one person's life for a few moments. Living the ways of God is living life one day at a time as it is a gift. That day, that hour, that minute, or that second that we have are all gifts. How do we learn God's ways? Well, we read and study scripture. No, I'm not saying go home, sit down with your Bible, and that's what you're going to do during the Super Bowl game. No! Start your day out. And as I teach in our Bible study, do not just read one passage. Take it in context. You, want to, you have a favorite passage? That's wonderful. But, you can, but can you tell me what the verses say before and after your favorite passage? That's where the challenge lies. I ask people to take their favorite verses in context so that way there you don't take it out of context. It's very easy to take one verse and twist it and use it the way that God did not and meant for it to be used. But when you take it in context, you see more clearly, you see the message that God wants you to see. Transforming ourselves away from being just flesh and blood is going to take time. And as we do it, as we learn to do it, we build relationships and community in peace and love. We begin to learn that each person we come into contact with is different from us. And that's okay. Because we don't share their experiences in a lot of cases. We haven't walked their pathway. We haven't walked their journey. But when we hook up together and we come in community together, now we're not traveling by ourselves anymore. We're not traveling alone. And we have God there. And we have Jesus and the Holy Spirit sitting with us in community. There is no room in the body of Christ for jealousy and quarreling. The gifts and talents that we share are not ours alone. They belong to God, and God entrusted them with you to share with the world. Gifts and talents that are from God are used for building God's kingdom. So why be jealous? Jealousy has no place in God's kingdom. What are we quarreling over? What are we building in the work that we're doing belongs to God in God's future kingdom that maybe have not yet been born that will sit in these pews long after we're called home. Coming in contact with each other by different ways and means means that we have to be willing to understand that we're not going to get our own way all the time. It's children that want their way all the time. We're supposed to be able to compromise with each other. We're supposed to be able to sit, discuss what will take place, and move forward. And if the compromise needs to be done, then let us compromise. We realize, and you should realize, that when you're angry and anger is present within you, you're not only not leaving any room for God with you, 
but you're not leaving any room for God's plans, God's people, God's actions that will bring you to fruition, a completion. Paul tells us that it takes many individuals and actions and intercessions from God's behalf to raise the spiritual awareness of an individual. God put us all together for a reason. Every one of us that sits in this room, every one of us that comes in this room for a season or for a lifetime are here for a different purpose and we're all needed in the work. What's your part of the work? For that, each of us needs to be open to possibilities. For what you per persevere, for what you perceive as your work or your part of the work may not be the same plans that God has for you. So are you willing to move you aside and to let God move into the, few, into the center? To grow, to become more, to be a physical and spiritual reflection of Christ it takes us all. It takes our family, it takes our friends, it takes our neighbors, it takes our community. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, we build human relationships that hold God and Jesus' teachings at its foundation. For as Paul writes, we are all ser God's servants working together. You are God's field, God's building. Our God is a relational God. Our God calls for our participation. Our God is our ultimate teacher and God places us together so we might learn from one another. Becoming opening, broadening our individual definitions of love. God brings us many opportunities to be together and serve together, to challenge and maybe transform one another with the help of God and the lessons that Jesus taught us. Lessons about living in community, living in family, becoming a true disciple with Jesus' examples of how God truly wants us to live and love and to do it in peace. May it be so. Amen. Our next hymn will be, It Is Well With My Soul, number 561. Please stand as you are able.
Please be seated. God gives us so many gifts, doesn't he? The gift of one another, the gift of love, the gift of peace, the gift of just hanging out at a Super Bowl game. Got you for that one, Bob. Super Bowl. Yes. That's the way to get Bob all excited. <laughs> Baseball, football, hockey? Okay. Those are all the gifts that God gave to Bob. <laughs> and you know something, Bob? God doesn't want anything back from you for those gifts. It, that's a real good thing, isn't it? Yeah, you, you'd be slaving 24-7 for those gifts. But you know what God does call us to do? He calls us to be disciples, to be Christians. And part of the agreement that we made as Christians is that we would share of our time, talent, and treasures to help and to further discipleship and Christ's mission here on earth. And that's what our offering does. It's not to make anybody rich or anything else. It's to help. And we're called to help one another. And this is one of the ways that we choose to do it. Now, if you're new in the sanctuary, you may be wondering, well, he, every week the pastor says, if you haven't made your morning offering, please feel free to rise and you'll find an offering box in the back. Make your morning offering as you are able. Well, a lot of people don't get up to do that because they do their offering online or automatic giving, whatever it is called. And that's phenomenal. But there are those of us that were raised the old-fashioned way, and we like to put our money in the box. So it doesn't matter how we choose to do it. What is important as we choose to do it, to further God's mission. So at this time, I invite anyone that has not yet made your offering to please rise. You'll find an offering box in the back. Please make your morning offering there. And for those of you that are sitting at home this morning, you will find a PayPal button on your screen. Please hit it and give as you are able. At this time, let our morning offering commence. Please rise as you are able. Would you please join me in the prayer of dedication that is printed in your bulletin on page three. O oh God, we live and move, act and hope.
Please have a seat. And now we come to what I consider to be one of the most sacred times in our service. For I believe in my heart and in my mind that this is one of the greatest gifts that God gives to us, his people. The gift of community. The gift of being with one another when things are great. And the gift of being with one another when things are a little tough. That we may carry one another through the highs and the lows that life will throw at us. So at this time, I ask that if you have a joy or a concern sitting on your heart this morning, please raise it up to God and the congregation so we may be with you in help. Good morning, Steve. Not yet. Go wait for the mic. Uh, well, first of all, I need prayers for my niece, Kim was having a lot of medical problems. And also from my wife, Judy, who not only is dealing with, uh, the, you know, her, the, yeah, <laughs> but she's also on a very strict diet, which she hates. <laughs> and, uh, how, and I also need prayers for myself because I'm never going to survive it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Steve is asking us to keep his niece Kim in our prayers this week as she's facing medical problems. And we will keep Judy in prayer as she recovers from her knee surgery and faces the diet that she hates. And we'll keep Steve in our prayers that he ducks and runs real fast. <laughs> I would like prayers for the people of Turkey and Syria who have been going through an unbelievable tragedy through the earthquake. They need all the prayers and help we can give them. We are being asked to keep Syria and Turkey in our prayers this week as they recover from that massive earth earthquake that they have and so many of our brothers and sisters have perished in it. Keep them in your hearts and minds and keep an eye open for legitimate ways to help. Yes, I'd like prayers for uh, Pat and Shirley. Uh, Pat, as he recovers from his surgery, which has been a very slow recovery for him, and he's going to be there for a little while longer. And for Shirley, for patience and it's been a difficult road for her to bear. So please pray, keep her in prayers as well as Pat. We've been being asked to keep our brother and sister, Pat and Shirley, in our prayers as Pat recovers from his open heart surgery. And as Shirley takes on the role of caregiver and lifts his spirit and at the same time struggles to have our own spirit lifted. Let us keep them in our prayers. God is with you. Let us pray. Holy One, we come before you with much on our hearts and minds this morning. We have your children suffering around the world. We have our brothers and sisters in Turkey and Syria that are facing devastation and rebuilding of their community and their lives. We hold our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine as they fight the cold and they fight just to be home and to have their own home back. Lord, we ask your guidance and your peace for these people. Lord, we pray for all of our brothers and sisters that serve as first responders to our communities. We thank you for the gift 
that they're willing to give and to share with us. We thank you for their knowledge that you have instilled in them and your wisdom on how best to serve. Lord, we ask you to watch over our policemen, our firemen, our ambulance drivers, our nurses, our doctors, all of those that stand in harm's way willingly and lovingly as your children to provide others of your children safety. Lord, we ask you to watch over all of our leaders in the world. Lord, we ask that you instill in them your wisdom and the knowledge that they're not there for their own benefit, but they're there to serve your people. Lord, we ask for prayers for your church, both this church and the larger church. With your help, Lord, may your words reach the greater communities and may peace and love triumph over all. Lord, we ask you in prayer to keep us mindful of one another, to keep us mindful of our community, and to help to build it to be the best that it can be. Lord, but this is not all that sits in our hearts today. There is so much that we cannot give word to, that we cannot find voice for. So in this holy silence, please read our hearts and minds to uncover what we need. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning will be Fill the World with Love, number 467. Please stand as you are able.
Please be seated. My brothers and sisters, as we depart from this sacred, safe, and secure space, my prayers for you is this. May God protect you and shield you from all harm and all devastation that the world holds. May the lessons that are example of Jesus Christ placed before us guide your footsteps in your lives to fuller meaning. And may the Holy Spirit continually keep your hearts and minds open and aware to opportunities of what a bright future holds. All of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>